Uh, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the November 2023 meeting of the International Model Investment Club. Uh, my name is Mina McHale. I'm the current chapter president of the club. Uh, please see the links to our social media pages, our YouTube channel, our Facebook pages, as well as our Better Investing page for more information. Um, so just going to present a quick uh, background on the club, as well as a disclaimer, then we'll move through the agenda for tonight's uh, meeting and, and then we'll kick off the festivities. Uh, so the club was founded in May of 2016. We are a better investing model club that is open to the public for both uh, joining and for uh, visitation. Our monthly, our meetings occur once a month. They occur on the third Mondays of each month with the exception of December when we meet on the second Monday. Um, in this case, we only use hypothetical money this allows us to avoid any tax issues, currency exchange issues, um, and and you know the the difficulties and logistics of a of a real money club. Um, it also allows us to act as a learning lab where we can understand the principles of better investing and apply them to decisions and to research. Uh, in fact, we get to use the better investing principles and tools as well as the fundamentals of stock investment to learn how to invest and operate a um, a, a financial club like this. Um, all our meetings are held online, and as a result, uh, in combination with our use of hypothetical money, we're able to uh, attract members from across the globe. Um, and so we currently have 13 members from across the United States, Canada, as well as China. So you'll notice a, um, a, a panel uh, on your right, the right-hand side of your screen. Um, you'll see different subcategories on that panel, one of them being handouts there. You can uh, feel free to access the agenda uh, to follow along uh, and any other handouts that might be included for tonight's meeting. I don't think there will be anything else. Um, guests and visitors, welcome. Thank you for joining us. You will be muted for the duration of the, or the first portion of the meeting. Uh, there will be a period uh, towards the end of the meeting when we open up the uh, line for your questions, comments, feedback. Um, just having a quick chat. Uh, you will notice on the panel there is a uh, questions sub subcategory. Please feel free to post your questions in live in real time and we will do our best to have the presenters, whoever the speaker is, uh, address that question in real time. Um, all our segment times are, uh, all our segments are timed, pardon me, and uh, this is so that we can respect your time and, and ensure that we, we stay on, on schedule. So moving on to the club's disclaimer. Uh, the information presented tonight is for educational purposes only, and it is not intended as a recommendation to buy or sell any of the securities that are mentioned. The views expressed are those of the participants only and do not necessarily re represent those of better investing. We strongly encourage all investors to conduct their own research and analysis before making any investment decisions. Uh, the securities discussed tonight may be held by any of the presenters or club members in their own personal portfolios. The presentation, this, the, the presentations you may see tonight may contain images of websites, products, services that are not specifically endorsed by Better Investing or any of the presenters themselves. And finally, the meeting is recorded and it will be posted for our YouTube channels in the coming days for you to reference and to, to go back to any topics that were particularly salient to you. So. Having gone through that, uh, tonight's meeting uh, is focused highly on law. We have the treasure report by our treasure ready. Uh, well, will present us an education topic on the topic of uh, seller trim. So we'll have an, uh, you know, a, a portfolio management education topic that I'm looking forward to. Then we have a significant number of quarterly reports that have come up um, uh, on the calendar for this year um, from, from our portfolio. So we'll go through some of um, those organizations and discuss um, some of the, the, the holdings we have. And then finally, that's when we'll open the, the, the microphone for guests and for questions um, and move on to club business. So at this time, I will hand off the mic to our treasurer, Reddy, um, and hopefully um, allow him to make the treasurer report for November. Thank you, Reddy. You can hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, stop. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> are you able to see my screen? Yes, we are. Okay. Um, I'll present the treasury report for this month. <coughs> Uh, this is the first slide. I deposited thirteen hundred dollars for uh, towards the monthly contribution for each member, hundred dollars today. Uh, I entered the transaction that we bought RMD uh, per our last month's motion, uh, ten ten plus shares, total of uh, fifteen hundred. And uh, since it was passed on uh, ten. October 16th, I took the end of the day price, uh, $141, 24 cents. Uh, we did not sell anything. We did not pay out anything. As of now, including today's uh, cash deposit, we have 4,700 balance. <clears throat> we can buy some stock if you, if you all agree. Um, here is the heat map. Uh, uh, our vertex and uh, call, call is and meta are uh, about the largest ones because a couple of them appreciate really good. That's why. Uh, here is the uh, gain loss uh, screen. Uh, you can see that we are in four of them are in the red and uh, four of them really good. Uh, appreciate quite a bit and uh, uh, I entered RMD where is RMD yeah ResMed I entered the ResMed here this is a new edition it shows up here uh, next is I listed the biggest winners and biggest losers more than 10 percent uh, which uh, which I consider significant um, the, these uh, Five stocks uh, gained good amount, especially the Vertex Pharma and uh, Charles Schwab, 68%. Uh, Meta also, <clears throat> and actually Qualys too. Uh, biggest losers are um, all small numbers, but uh, percentage-wise, they are about 10%. Disney, Amazon, uh, in Innovative Industrial Properties. And the next slide is uh, the performance versus benchmark. Uh, we are slowly improving the, this year performance because last couple of months we are doing good because stock market is going up. Uh, next, uh, this is the PERT. Uh, I, it's good to see that uh, Several people have updated their uh, SSGs. A couple of them are not yet. Uh, they are old ones sitting there. Um, the FCX, FCX is uh, uh, Frank, some McMoran, I think, and the LIH, LGIH, I should say, LG. Uh, and the vertex need to be updated. They are sitting in, uh, say, July, July, no, August. Um, RMD shows, because I entered it today, it shows as uh, 1101, but that's not the right number. Next month it will be corrected. Um, RMD, but uh, somebody has to uh, start looking at RMD uh, stock assignment. Uh, I don't know. The Mina may decide who is going to follow we RMD. Decided. RMD huh? will be followed by uh, Isla. Oh, yeah. Isla. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope Isla um, links her SSG to the website so that it can get updated here. Also, paychecks uh, is messy. I will follow paycheck. I'm following paycheck. Oh, okay, paycheck is yeah, paycheck is uh, somebody updated eleven twenty twenty three. It shows. Uh -huh. I that's me. I updated it today. Okay. Yeah. Uh, club assets uh, companies. These are all the companies that we have. Uh, we have about seven percent cash, but. Uh, 
the rest of them are fairly well distributed only vertex is because of its uh, good appreciation shows as a large piece of pie um, next one uh, they, they, these are all around uh, say 10 percent and below uh, qualis is a little bit more and vertex is 20 uh, percent um, this is the diversification chart uh, this is on the left side is the recommended mid size is about 50 percent small is about 25 percent large is about 25 percent and this is our care our uh, stock portfolio as of now we can see that uh, mid we should increase mid and uh, uh, and large uh, uh, mega i don't know the mega comes in as a part of large yeah um, I think so. Yeah, the <clears throat> this is the uh, sector diversification. Um, we represent about eight uh, eight seg eight sectors. I think three or four of them still missing. Consumer, discretionary, energy, industrials, and utilities are missing. We can uh, pick up one of one or two of them today if, if you the club decides and this is the last slide this is the industries um, and if it's uh, fairly well distributed five percent seven percent only internet is a little larger and biotech is larger any questions okay I this completes my treasury report. Thank you. Great, right. thank you very much, Red. Appreciate it. Um, now, I guess thank you. That was very helpful. Uh, well, if you're ready to, um, you know, leave the education topic on seller trim, then uh, I'd like to hand off the. Yes, I am ready, more or less. Hang on, let me. Uh... see main monitor two you see a screen that says seller trim yes we do awesome uh first off my sympathies to you guys for, for uh seem to be under the weather uh yeah let me see the beginning okay seller seller trim that is the question the um i i picked up i uh, was looking at a, a video from the Better, Better Investing Learning Library and caught my eye, and it was entitled Seller Trim. It was given by a guy uh, from California, Craig Bramer, and I'm gonna give an overview all on that topic. So selling traditionally has been pretty tough, uh, at least for me and for another, other people that I've talked to in other clubs. Uh, it's got its, its psychological issues. Uh, when, a, when a stock is, is uh, not doing too well. We want us. We know we need to sell, but we at least we want to at least break even, hold on until it comes back, uh, so we can recover our our uh, our cost. We don't like to admit that we've made a mistake. On the other end of, of the spectrum, um, when a company is doing well, uh, we kind of hesitate to to sell because we don't want to sell too early. We want we have FOMO feel the fear of missing out there's really no precise formula for when when to get out of a, a out of a out of the stock a uh, reminder that not all stocks win over the long term we have we have uh, the mentality at least uh, I have of buying and holding on forever uh, <laughs> uh, but some of the top, top 10 you know top, top 10 leaders that were once top 10 are no longer Top 10, Exxon, IBM, for example. Uh, top 10 leaders can go south. Uh, for example, uh, Lehman Brothers, JCPenney, Kodak. Uh, this slide shows a graph of, uh, so shows a slide of, um, you know, IBM was predominant in the 80s and the 90s. And as you go through the decades, 
they're no longer the top 10. Um, Microsoft seems to be holding on uh, for the for at least three decades. But it's just a, a reminder that if companies that were that are top of their game may not be top of the game as the decades go by. The Craig showed the number of graphs, um, and you know if you had bought in the early in the left side side of the graph, I don't know if you can see my mouse. Can you see my mouse move? Uh, if you had bought, if you had bought on the left left side of the uh, of the screen, uh, and it, it, it as it goes up and it seems to be plateaued, do you sell at this point? Uh, if you do, uh, if you if you had sold, then the second graph is that you would have missed out on the upper upper end of the um, of the growth, and um, and if you had all, hold on even further, you know, it, it, there's a precipitous drop. And ho ho hopefully you would sold, sold at the top and possibly sold in this end before you w w went down all the way down. Uh, on a, you know, so if you, you have, like me, typically you buy uh, buy low and, you know, you, you think it's gonna go on forever, the growth, but if you had missed out these opportunities to sell at these points, you would have essentially made no money throughout the, the years as, as the years go by. So trimming allows you to take some money off the, uh, the table. It, um, it, you trim part of your, uh, so part of the stock, part of the portion of the stock that you own and, and not sell it all. Uh, let, it lets the winners continue to run and also controls the, the portfolio size so that it doesn't get uh, predominantly big like our in, in our particular case vertex is seems to be getting uh, sizable quite a bit sizable and the second bullet item says that you know when you trim there's certainly less stress and emotion than selling it all uh, and of course it raises some cash for further di diversification in, in your portfolio here's a kind of a uh, rule of thumb, cheat sheet, uh, when to sell and when to tr uh, trim. On the top two bullet items, you know, it's likely sell if the company's uh, outlook is looking unfavorable, the financial conditions are deteriorating, uh, those you're probably likely to sell. There's a whole list of other presentations that have, you know, there's a list of 25, 30 questions that you go through to in, to, uh, in order to sell. The yellow section is uh, is a little bit more of a uh, you know a little bit more of a debate. You know, profits. Uh, let's say profit margins are declining. You don't know if it's temporary or long term. Uh, you have a change in management. Seems to have an adverse effect on on the company. Uh, maybe a co competition is increasing, uh, or yeah, or the company has a one trick pony. Only has one product and. Um, and not a lot to uh, for expansion, so you'd probably there's a debate whether to sell or trim. The last two items, the company is getting pretty large, uh, the, uh, and the position size has become quite a bit larger in your portfolio. So this is a risk if it takes, if it were to go south for some reason, um, it take a big um, chunk out of your portfolio. So those are the two items that would, are probably a no-brainer for trimming. Uh, Craig uh, gave a, a fairly mechanical, automatic process as to when to when to um, when to trim, uh, and it says that it meets when when it meets two conditions. Uh, first, it exceeds reaches or exceeds the target price, and uh, the second item is when it reaches or exceeds twice, 2x, the average portfolio weight on, on your portfolio. For example, if you have, if your portfolio has 15 stocks, uh, 100 divided by 15 gives you an average weight uh, on, your, on your portfolio of 6.67. So if your stock that you're considering trimming is twice that, uh, in other words, 13.3%, then you would trim at that point. So uh, the in your in the numbered items you have an ex, uh, the two conditions: the target price, 
will be whatever your cost is plus some gain. Let's say you decide the company there, the, the club decides that uh, once you reach a 60% uh, gain, it's time to start trimming uh, or, you know, you can go up to 100, but let's say you, you decide on 60% uh, a gain. So that would be your target price. And then the, uh, the second, uh, so the second number two item is trim. Here's an Excel spread, uh, Excel equation like, it's a, essentially a if then clause, if then else. So if the condition is met, then you do the first, uh, the item in green. If it doesn't meet that condition, then you return no. So if the current price is greater than or equal to your target price, that's the condition, then you do the green part. Otherwise you return no. And uh, so the green part is an yet another if then else clause. So if your stock percentage in your portfolio is greater than or equal to twice the average weight, then yes, you would trim. Otherwise you return maybe. So that would be a somewhat automated uh, uh, way that when the, uh, upon meeting uh, with the club, you know, you'd have a, your treasurer would report, yes, we would trim on stock X. Uh, now the question is how much to trim. So, uh, oh, well, I forgot that after trimming, your cost is adjusted uh, so that, you know, you have remaining shares. You don't, you don't, you did not sell all, you'll just you sold a percentage. So your, your next, co your cost would be updated to, if you had chosen 60%, would be cost times 1.6. So that would be your next cost. Uh, that, that would be the next uh, value of your cost. Uh, so how much to trim? He's suggesting between 10 and 20% if the company has a wide moat. Uh, in other words, the competitors are being kept out to a larger extent. Then yes, trim by 10%. If, if it's no, then you probably trim a bigger percentage, probably 20% or consider selling. Um, by wide moat, it's, you, you check into Morningstar's definition. If it has one or one of the four criteria, it, uh, companies that have a network effect. In other words, uh, uh, companies like Amazon uh, the, or Visa, the greater the expanding user base, the, the more usage or value the product or the firm has. Like um, item number two is, is switching. Um, switching to competitors has causes significant cost. For example, if a company has bought into Microsoft, switching to another uh, another office vendor would be would be, be a significant cost. Uh, a third item would be intangible assets. Uh, if you are like a name name brand man uh, that prefer Nike and you don't wish to change, well, you know, or Starbucks, uh, that has uh, also a wide mode. Cost advantage. Uh, companies like the cost of economies of sale, like Walmart, would also be having a wide moat. Wide moats for smaller companies, you look for a higher than average return on invested capital, return on equity, higher uh, pre-tax margin than usual, uh, return on equity with uh, low debt. And he mentioned uh, uh, focusing or spending more time on wide moat companies uh, and there are not that many. It says 200, uh, 200 of the, the 1,500 more, the universe of more that Morningstar covers, uh, those have wide moats. So not, not a lot of them. This slide indicates uh, a, um, a uh, Morningstar's universe of companies that, you know, 1,500, roughly 1,500 companies that it covers. And over the decades, uh, over the uh, last, um, the average for the last 10 years, the return on those 1,500 has been a 6.8 return on uh, return. Uh, if you look at the bottom uh, bottom right, the one in the red, the companies with no moats uh, re had returned for the last 10 years at 2.9, which is even uh, half, less than half the the overall universe's range. So the wide moats 
you know, focusing on the wide moat or the narrow moat companies would give you longer term uh, return on your uh, investment. So that's the gist of, uh, of the presentation. Here's the, uh, the presentation was given in 21, November 21, uh, seller trim. Presenter was Craig uh, Bramer. And um, that's it. Hopefully I didn't put you to sleep. Uh, any questions? Thanks, Will. That was great. Yeah, well, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Maybe when we present the, tonight's uh, reports that we can focus on follow this guideline. I noticed the majority of that listed there are holds and I know there are a few blanks on the uh, on the agenda. I know for me at least LGIH is also a hold. Are there any companies so we, uh, that we want to start off with? Does anybody want to feel they need to present their quarterly report or you know were there any interesting findings, anything you want to raise to the group? We could start that way. What are the companies we think we should trim? Yeah, so I mean, unless, yeah, if there's no, is it, yeah, after Kual's presentation, does anybody want to reconsider their hold? Actually, you're ready. Could you share the screen with the, um, the percentage? that we had there, the proportion that each company constitutes of our portfolio. I'll give you the screen if you don't mind putting that up. That might be helpful to... Vertex was the one that... Pretty or, uh, okay. I think uh, this, is this a slide you would like to see? Yeah, I think that looks right to me. Yeah, if you don't mind, um, so if you just go back down to the company, yeah, so it looks like what are the largest company? It looks like Qualys is sorry, Ben, ready. Can you go back to the previous slide? Okay. Yeah. So there we see the companies and what percentage they constitute of our portfolio. So the biggest ones it looks like are Meta, Qualys. Oh, Vertex. Uh, Vertex. Vertex is that sorry, yeah, almost twenty one. I'm having a hard time seeing the uh, right. Is there any way you can maximize your screen? Sorry. Huh? Could you maximize that window by any chance? Just the uh, I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah, I just hit that. Actually, no, 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 never mind. I just I I, I blown it up on my screen. It's okay. Um, oh, trying to do that, it disappeared. <laughs> no, just uh, you can undo that. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't the oh, square on the oh, okay, right slide? Huh? You can do. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. I think this. Good. Click the slideshow, click the slideshow, yeah. Just go ahead and click the slideshow, we'll see the whole page. Now you, we cannot see the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how do, how do I minimize my... Slideshow, on slideshow on upper, right, upper right, upper right. Yeah, that's, upper right. that's, that's, that's okay. great. That's okay. that works. Yeah. Um, okay. okay, yeah. We cannot see the whole company though. Yeah. The slideshow is on top right. Ready, can you reduce the focus the the zoom to hundred percent so we can see everything? Oh, okay. Thank you. There we go. Okay. Yeah, thanks. So yeah, the looks like the major the biggest culprits are Vertex, Qualys, Meta, maybe Google, and those are the only ones well, that I think, right. I think according to Hoyle's presentation, anything over sixteen point six seven percent is meets one criteria, one of the criteria. The other criteria is over what price you would determine you would want to sell, right, Hello. Right. Uh, well, you, I can go back to that formula, but uh, the, the, the club would decide what the target price should be. In other words, uh, you want to meet your cost plus some gain. Uh, let's say it's 100 percent or, you know, so you, you set that as your target uh, and then you go through the formula. But yeah. Uh, Vertex would be a prime in, 
prime um, uh, one for, for trimming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we hold, we hold what eleven stocks. Yes. No R and D as well, right? We should consider trimming uh, vertex um, when the price reach um, probably 380 or 390 because I think there's still potential uh, for growth and uh, we will look at the um, quarterly report next month and we decide. I think 380, 90 would be the right price to trim to sell a little bit, but, and uh, the, the, the target price uh, by uh, some other an analysts, well-known analysts, they are around 400, 439. So I would think that we should trim Vertex at that target price. So Vertex, to, Vertex to, report is not due today, not due this month. Exactly. It has not come out there. We didn't, uh, I, I didn't think that we will have time to cover it. So I will present next month. What, what's the cost of Vertex right now? The price? It, the price uh, is 350 something. Okay. It's, it's here, price is here. Yeah. So we have $30, at least $30 more to grow. 215. Yeah, price for share is 350.5. Yeah, as you can see, the market is rebounding. So I think we shouldn't sell now. I mean, we have to see how it goes in a couple of weeks. Well, and I think it has reached 387, very, you know, just very, very short, you know, uh, very well, short time ago. Okay. So we, yep. Okay. But, but, but Jane, you know, Joel uh, said that. Uh, we should make our, our our initial cost plus some profit out of it. So our initial cost yes. is two fifteen, and the cost right now is three fifty. Well, we've already covered our cost. We've made a substantial profit. It occupies uh, what is it twenty percent of our holdings. If something goes wrong with Vertex, you know who knows what goes wrong with it. Might go wrong with it. We lose quite a bit. So we think we should trim the twenty percent. If we're holding 11 stocks, we should all, all the stocks should hold uh, should uh, uh, make up about seven eight percent of our holdings. Well, there are stocks in here that make up five percent, seven percent, four percent. Those ones we shouldn't touch because they have not reached the limit yet. But Vertex should occupy seven percent of our portfolio or eight percent of our portfolio, and it occupies 20. We have a lot of risk now. Vertex, something might go wrong. Who knows? I, mean, oh, Jay, I know you don't have the report. Do you think that we should just look at the, your uh, look at the quarterly the graph to see how they how they would how they were doing this quarter last quarter? The report, the report has been out. We are not just waiting on the report to come out. The report has been out and it's been good, and it reached three eighty seven in November, the beginning of November. And, and and the market was down ever since, but it was standing really well until this recent two weeks. And now it's rebounding. It would be a shame to lose that thirty dollars profit. Okay, but you know we already are already ahead of our cost. The cost was two fifteen. Now it's. Well, I don't think we should consider ahead of our cost. You have to see the ongoing prospect of this company. It's not a me mechanical formula you have to look at the company prospect yeah, yeah but jane you're we're risking a lot right so, because if something jane, goes wrong jane you said you, oh, i'm talking about quarter report not the company's quarter report they already come out i'm talking you know you did not prepare the quarterly report yourself the one that's yeah. for the club but do you yeah. think we should just look at the ssg the quarterly report on, yeah i think uh, morning star? So we can take a look at what was going on, at least at the um, high level, how this quarter is doing. Yeah. We, we don't we don't have to decide today. In other words, the the no. presentation gives right. uh, uh, the club a, to consider the question whether trimming is a good idea or not, and 
you Good know, idea. and then uh, the, if the company has a wide moat, then that's a consideration. If it doesn't, then you trim a little bit more. Uh, so maybe giving time for uh, Jane or whoever's following Vertex to, uh, we're considering trimming with Vertex, uh, give you a yes or no and how much of a percentage to trim is would be the presentation. Okay. Was meant what I'm say. hearing from Jane is that she agrees to trend, but she just does not. She opposed that reach to 380, have a limit order of a 380. That's is that right, Jane? I've heard you say she said she agreed to trade, but she wants yeah. yeah. You know, there's there's a thing called the there's a thing called the selling trailing stop order, which if the stock continues to go up, your your limit price will go up, and then you set a it'll can climb as long as it's climbing but uh so once you set i mean th those are um stop orders and it's called a selling stop trail a trailing a sell trailing stop order which means trailing stop continue. loss order. yeah yeah, yeah stop loss. so uh, yes so it'll in other words if a company the, if the value or the, the price continues to climb then you you, you reset your limit Right, you reset your uh, your trigger point. Yeah, we so, can do that. Right, I mean, so it would it would um, uh, you know appease the uh, Jane, Jane's uh, point. Yep. Okay. Although we can simply just set a, a limit sell order of three eighty five or something, but I still think that I should present um, the report. So I can do it over the email and I will show you all the report and we decide on which target price you want to sell it, uh, trim it at. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think it makes sense if we have a report coming next month to to table Vertex and to implement well as trimming the criteria, the checklist to, 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 to apply it then when we when we review the company more in depth. Now, what about Qualys? I know, I know, I appreciate who well, the road to sixteen and a half percent or so, but just looking at um, when we have a disproportionate ownership percentage as opposed to you know as a percentage of our portfolio, you mentioned you know for example if we have ten stocks, each of them be ten percent of the portfolio is a general rule of yeah. um, kind of the the, the 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 base line that we look for now. Do you think we should be looking at, based on your your research, should we be looking at companies like Qualys, for example, where fourteen percent is nearly double the majority or the average holding for other companies? Is that something that becomes a candidate for a trim? Well, I'd love your thoughts on that. Uh, you're saying once it's reached two x uh, uh, the size of your portfolio, then you're asking me whether, whether the, policy... and the average other company that we own, let's let's say the average here, looking at this quickly, not mathematically, it's like, let's say it's 7%. Um, do you think when we get to a 2X factor that we should be kind of looking at that company through a trimming filter or should we just not worry about that, that aspect of it? I'm not sure I understand the question, but okay. Uh, he, he did mention that it, once it reaches, it, the two conditions are met. You want to re, uh, get your your cost plus some profit, and we haven't decided what that profit margin is as as a club that we should get from each stock. Uh, the other consideration, the other aspect is that uh, it has to be two x uh, the size of, of the company, and the third is the moat. In other words, the uh, does a company have a wide moat or not, and if, or has a narrow moat. Or no mode at all. Does the does Vertex Vertex probably has a wide mode? I'm not. I'm guessing. I'm not sure about Qualys. Uh, so uh, so that would determine the amount of of trimming, whether it's 10% uh, for a wide mode company, or you know for 20% or higher for a no mode company. Okay. Yeah. That that is my question. Essentially, my question was. How would you, as kind of from a 2,000 foot level, look at a portfolio and say these are the candidates to trim? And I appreciate the factors and the, the criteria that were listed, but just as a 
kind of even more of a rough hand approach to it. And so I think that approach, you know, you've answered those three criteria. We should be looking for those those three elements in any of the companies that we hold. Can somebody summarize with wide mode and narrow mode? I I went on that in the uh, in the slide. I can go over that again. Oh, so um, sorry, I missed it. What are the companies in our portfolio? A wide mode versus a small uh, narrow mode. Oh well, Qualys is a small company. I don't yeah. think it has a wide mode. I think it has a narrow mode because there are other companies that are competing with it. A moat is a, 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 a imbues advantages to a particular company, advantage in raw material, advantage in labor, advantage in material, advantage in, uh, in the case of Amazon, it's the network effect. It's the offer their clients, music, games, uh, uh, retail, uh, uh, cloud computing, the offer, so many things like the network effect. That's a wide mode. Yeah, also the, the other aspects are switching, uh, switching to competitor costs, yeah. yeah. pretty expensive. Yeah. Uh, uh, wide, wide, mo wide mode is very well diversified products and uh, marketing, but the vertex is uh, basically one. Um, uh, Pharmacy, one uh, drug yeah. company. The drug yeah. is a cystic fibrosis, yeah. and if if somebody else ca breaks the ground tomorrow and yeah. comes up with their their uh, uh, cystic fibrosis uh, drug, yeah. then this company will fall down like a rock. Yeah, that's what so I mean. Mo so morning star, morning star it's, narrow, it's a narrow mode. This is the narrow mode company. Narrow mode company, yeah. Uh, Morningstar defines those. You know, look at a company. It says it'll give you whether it has a moat, wide moat or not. Okay. What is my uh, what is Morningstar saying about Vertex? I, I don't yeah. know, or uh, I don't know. But it's a you know it's a one trick pony. No, no. Vertex has a lot of uh, innovation, innovative medicine in the pipeline. So it's not the, the EF. It has more. That's why the price keep on going. That's why the price staying well in 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 the midst of the all this downturn correction. Yeah. And it just came down from 387 uh, in November on November 7. So just two weeks ago, it was still standing at 387. Yeah. But uh, Jane, all uh, drug companies have uh, new drugs in the pipeline. And the problem is that sometimes they don't get approved by the FDA. I know, but their, their, their medicine, if you see from my last quarterly report, their medicine, not just in the in initial phase one, a lot right. of them is phase two. They have a narrow mode according to Morningstar. Yeah. I know, I know it's not the mode, it's not a wide mode company. But it's up to you. If you want to trim a bit at this price, I just thought it would be a pity to lose that thirty dollars. Ah, we could lose a lot more, right? Because okay, anyone, okay. anyone could announce a new breakthrough, right? So we could lose a heck of a lot more. So we should all debate it when everybody's around, when everybody's here. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Somebody could make a motion we can decide, or we just because it's a learning lab, we can wait till Jane's presentation for next uh, month. Either I, way, yeah, yeah, I, yeah I suggest I that we wait better. because I suggest we wait for two reasons. Um, because I know we've had in the past a precedent where we like to buy and sell companies that we've looked at in detail on that same meeting. Um, so if it gives Jane the opportunity to present the quarterly report and then we can apply what well has taught us today and do the full analysis then I think it may be beneficial um, and it just more and more consistent with our approach with other companies where we try and buy and sell the ones that we're discussing. I, I would like to make a recommendation that we should also focus on those losers mm -hmm. um, like Amazon, yep. Disney, what's the other one? Oh, IPR. Are these reports due today? 
Do we have any reports? Uh, we have a few of those due today. Today we have. So yeah, let's focus. We can focus on the more underperforming company. That's a good. That's a good approach today. Um, we have IRPR uh, due today. We have Amazon due today. Um, so I think those are two of the companies you mentioned, right, Jay? So yeah. Uh, if we want to start, I know Pierre Pierre recommended a hold for Amazon. Maybe that's a good place to start. Okay. Uh, Piero, do you mind if I hand you the screen or make you the presenter just so that you can maybe give us a quick five, you know, a quick few minutes on um, sure on Amazon. On sure. Amazon? That'd be great. Thank you. Okay. So show my screen. I click on that. Okay. Yeah, right now we see your My iClub website. Okay, so uh, that's my iClub members. Or, uh, you want to start with quarterly PERT or with some of the uh, 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 analyst reports? You're, you're the boss, wherever you think is uh, most okay. noteworthy. Um, I think we stop. Start. Oh, well, that's analyst reports. This is Amazon there. I'm going to get rid of this. So the financial results in the conference call slides. Um, okay. Okay. So net sales overall, they're up about 13%. Right. This includes the international uh, 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 division and North American division, division and AWS. Uh, North America, right? They did a 61%. Uh, internationally did 16% and uh, AWS, no, internationally did 23%, AWS did 16%. Okay, so sales were up. And they're up uh, uh, quite a bit for 127 to 143. Okay, then these are uh, trailing 12 months, right? So uh, sales are up. Uh, operating income is greatly up, right? So a third quarter 2022, 2000, uh, third quarter 2023 is 11,000, right? And, and when you, you do the calculations, it's about up 343%, okay? Uh, operating income trailing 12 months, um, uh, 26,000 compared to 12,000. Again, it's up 103%. Uh, net income, 2,000, uh, and then here in 20. Uh, the last quarter, 22, it dipped almost at zero. Now it's up to 9,000. And uh, net income, again, uh, tra uh, trailing 12 months uh, from 11,000 on, uh, on the first quarter, fourth quarter of 22, it was actually negative. Now it's up 20,000. So it's doubled its uh, net income. Uh, segment results, North America. North America did great. It was losing money. And now it's uh, making money, uh, four thousand. Uh, it lost money. Was it two uh, quarters here? Uh, net sales are up. Uh, let me see what here. Segment results. AWS. AWS made money. Now there's there's a there's a story behind AWS. AWS was the cloud uh, service by Amazon. They had a number of clients who themselves are going through hard times because of the interest rate rises. And so they uh, asked Amazon to uh, give them uh, packages that were less expensive. And Amazon gave it to them. Uh, we charged them less, you know, put, a, put them on to lower cost plans because they wanted to hold on to the clients. Well, now that, you know, uh, they survived the initial shocks, now they're beginning to... Uh, um, bring the prices back up to what they were kind of normal. They're just kind of inching the prices up. So they were, nothing really happened here, but look at the jump on the uh, uh, income for the last uh, third quarter of 2023. Because some of the uh, special deals are, are have run out. Free cash flow, it was negative for the longest time. Now it's 21,000, which is you know a huge number compared to zero, okay? Uh, free cash flow, uh, you know, when you guys were paying off taxes, uh, paying off uh, taxes, um, uh, loans, repaying loans, repaying interest, you know, if you're holding uh, debt in a high, in a raising interest rate environment, it's smart to pay off your debts because they're becoming much more expensive. 
you wouldn't pay off your debts when the interest rates were zero. You would just borrow money because it's free money. Anyway, uh, this again, ca uh, free cash flow after they pay off all their bills. Uh, and then number of shares outstanding. It's staying more or less essentially the same. So that works good for us. There's no dilution on share value. Okay, there's that. Uh, let me see which this which was this one here. The results. Um, and net income 1.2 billion. Uh, Rivian. Rivian Automotive actually did well uh, the past time, so it gained about 1.2 billion dollars. Uh, here, uh, AWS growth continues to stabilize advertising. Um, but you know that was the one where the story where they gave uh, their clients preferential treatment to kind of lower their costs. Uh, obs uh, obsesses how to uh, make customers' lives better. That's an obsession of theirs that'll come back to to, uh, to haunt us or to bite us, and I'll bring it up later. Um, uh, can you expand infrastructure footprint? This is what they're doing now. Uh, during the pandemic, Amazon was spending a lot of money because it was building infrastructure. It was building its footprint, its um, uh, you know building warehouses and all that. Now they've changed that over to they've expanded to twice the size of their fulfillment centers. Now they're turning their attention to AWS and building infrastructure there. They're building uh, data centers for AWS. Um, uh, oh, the satellites. <laughs> the Kuiper project. They're going to launch satellites into uh, low, low Earth orbit. Uh, one of the things that Amazon is doing now, they uh, uh, put in 250,000 full-time, part-time seasonal jobs. Uh, they, want, they should have been reducing their labor force. They said they were going to be reducing the labor force, but maybe they're just trying to take advantage of you know the coming uh, season, um, holiday seasons. So hopefully they'll be training the uh, labor force. They were talking about getting into automation, increasing the automations in the warehouses. Okay, financial guidance. Uh, they said uh, sales are going to go between seven percent and twelve percent. If you looked at the rest of my studies, I said nine percent. And one of the reasons was because you know the law of large numbers. Uh, it's hard. It's tough to grow anything at ten percent when you're a one point four trillion dollar company. Okay, operating income is going to be between seven billion and eleven billion, so it's going to be nine billion. Around about there. Okay, so we got that. So we're looking at some of the results here. Net income, uh, twenty thousand. We know that um, this is uh, for the uh, twelve months. And uh, last year it was eleven, so we doubled it. Stock-based compensation. We've got to keep an eye on that. Last year it was seventeen thousand. Now it's up to twenty-three thousand. We don't want that to get too big. Um, a purchase of property and equipment. Um, this was the build out for the uh, re, uh, uh, what are they called it uh, fulfillment centers for the physical plants and this is the build out for AWS they've reduced it right so 54,000 compared to 65 so they're being a little bit more strategic and their uh, the payment of short term debt that's right when a high interest rate environment or an increasing interest rate environment pay off your debt okay uh, net product sales, product sales. This uh, until September 30th, 22, 23, uh, was up a little bit, but the entry uh, and uh, net service sales were 225,000. When you're selling stuff, the margins are very small. Uh, Amazon is really kind of like a retailer, like a grocer almost, making three, four percent. But on services, the margins are very much bigger. And so they made much more money out of it. Sales and marketing. The interesting thing is that sales uh, and marketing stayed essentially the same, but their sales increased greatly. Uh, operating income, 23,000 compared to 9,000. So great uh, double there. Net income loss last um, year, 23, uh, 22. It was a loss. This year it's 19,000. I and mean, it's, it's higher than it's been in the last little while. Okay. Uh, let's keep on going here. This is goodwill. This is one of the things we have to keep our eyes on. Goodwill is about uh, last year it was 20,000. Now it's 22. So they're, they're, they have a good eye for the value of whatever it is that they're buying. 
so they don't have to write things off to goodwill. Long-term debt is being paid down, 67 to 61. Um, stockholders' equity, total stockholders' equity is going up. That's good for stockholders. That's us, right? So we're gaining there. Um, this is, let me see, uh, free cash flow. Free cash flow is 21,000 compared to uh, this is third quarter, uh, second quarter. Uh, third quarter 22 is a debt, a deficit of 19,000. Now it's 20,000. So we're not, in other words, we made up the 19 and then went 21 above. So they quadrupled it. Okay, it's, uh, and uh, free cash flow. Uh, Stock-based awards outstanding. Yeah, it's gone up a little bit, like 462 slightly, right? 481. Three, uh, we got to keep an eye on that. We don't want to get it to get out of hand. Um, MC operating income again. It's a uh, it's spectacular. Increased by 343 percent. Okay. Uh, operating margins. Operating margins went up to 244 percent. Its um, operating margins are doing quite well. Uh, net income loss, okay, again, up to 44. Um, this is operating margin. Operating margins for general operations are 4.9%. It's the highest it's ever been. It's always it was negative for a long time, 1.2. The, um, uh, the, gro the grocery store profit margin, right, 1.2, 3%. But now 4.9 percent. They think they're thinking of bringing it up to about 5.9 percent. Um, operating margin of international sales. Well, international sales are always losing money. Operating margins are always losing money. But now they've gotten very close to break even. So maybe the next quarter they might even actually make money. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, net sales growth excluding. Uh, this is for AWS. Uh, their uh, sales were slowing down. It was 33, 28, 20. Now it's 12, 12. It's kind of becoming more stable. And this was because they were giving their preferential treatment to certain customers because they wanted to hold on to the customers. Now they're phasing out those preferential treatments. Operating income uh, goes up about 29%. Operating margin about 30%. Right? That's the overall operations of the business. And one of the reasons for that is because the retail part of the Amazon is actually small, but what's actually gaining in uh, importance are services, advertising, AWS, and there's a third service that they've just starting to implement. And I'll talk about that later. Uh, let's see what else is here. Um, what is this here? Okay, uh, third party sellers, they uh, made about 20%, third party sellers. Okay, these are the guys that go into business for themselves and they're piggybacking on Amazon. Um, uh, uh, what's this one here is subscription services, 14%, uh, which is pretty good. You, you know, subscription is, you know, people uh, signing up for all the other little goodies that Amazon gives. Um, advertising went up 26%. Services, right? The, the margins are very much better in services. AWS went up to 12%. Okay, uh, sales and marketing. Actually, sales and marketing went down. Now, when a company spends less money on sales and marketing and budget, and all the sales go up, <laughs> it says something, right? It's not that they're constantly battering you to buy. If people are buying because they're voting with their feet. They, they're under the same conditions as the companies, right? They, they, uh, they're short of money. Everything is becoming more expensive, so they're going for the cheap stuff. Amazon. Okay, uh, okay, so that's that. Amazon uh, third quarter results, or these are the um, uh, what are called the uh, earnings um, uh, call. Uh, so they wrote that. I just highlighted some of the things here. Uh, pretty good stuff. I think you guys can go look through it. Uh, as we keep moving along here, this is my uh, SSG, but I'll get to the uh, live uh, feed for it. Uh, so I might as well go here for value line. This was value line here. Um, the uh, uh, price 
or the recent price was a dollar twenty hundred and twenty-six dollars. A PE ratio of fifty-one fifty-one point nine, and its future PE ratio is going to be about thirty-nine point five. So people are becoming more, you know, right now they're enthusiastic because of the recent results, but it, it is probably going to go down uh, in the future. Uh, net profit margin. Net profit margin. It was. It was very low for a long time, 5.5% uh, on 2020 when it was coming out of the, uh, oh, we're just about to go into the uh, pandemic. And now its profit margin is going to go up to 5.8, almost 6%. So that's the kind of the, uh, the story there. Their profit margins are improving because of the build out of their footprint. Now they uh, turned their attention to AWS because that is also going to be a high margin uh, area. Um, here, one of the things that um, that they're saying about uh, this, I'll bring it out on the uh, PERT report, is that in uh, in, uh, in some, our long-term projections are ill-defined and the stock is more volatile than its large cap peers, right? So its volatility of the price of Amazon is quite high. Uh, when, pe when Amazon does well, the price goes up. When Amazon does badly, people will, will uh, abandon it or uh, dump it. And there, therein lies an opportunity for Amazon. When the price goes up, trim. When the price goes down, buy. Okay, so there's that. Uh, uh, or stock reports. Well, we can go for this stock reports here. Uh, average score is about 8 out of 10, which actually is very good. Uh, for any kind of a company, eight of a ten. Um, let me see. There's a fundamental. No, this is uh, optimized scores nine. Uh, earnings are nine out of ten, so their earnings are good. Uh, there is uh, fundamentals are about eight out of ten, which is a good score. Relative valuation is three. Okay, meaning that's a little bit higher than it should be. Okay, uh, eight, which is uh, risk. Risk is relatively high. Uh, momentum is 10 because now everybody's jumping on board because of the last reports. Uh, insider trading or insider selling or whatever, insider trading is one because there is no insider trading. It's very low. Okay, Morningstar. Okay, go to Morningstar. Um, <clears throat> wide mode, wide mode. Amazon reported good third quarter results, uh, better than expected guidance. Okay. Um, yeah, these are some of the results that they just gave here. Uh, prof, uh, profitability, profitability was impressive, with operating profit coming in at 11.2 billion compared with the high end of guidance of 8.5 billion. So they exceeded their estimates. Operating margin of about 7.8 percent. Okay, um, Amazon dominates its served market. Right, it dominates because of the um, uh, the network effect. All the people that uh, are belong to Amazon fulfillment, uh, they can get anything that they want, and they do it on Amazon. And as as you read in one of the uh, reports there, when uh, you get your stuff in a day. You're inclined to order other things because you're going to get it the next day. So uh, uh, that's what's going on with Amazon. They're becoming more efficient. A uh, firm's advertising business is already large and continues to scale. Uh, advertising growth continues to outpace uh, that uh, for years. Okay. Overall, we see strong revenue and free cash flow for growth for years to come. High margin advertising, AWS. And uh, AWS uh, high margin advertising and AWS are going to boost corporate uh, profits for the next several years. Um, uh, fair price is $155. We're getting there. Amazon Prime membership uh, helped attract and retain customers who spend more than Amazon. This reinforces a powerful network effect while bringing it to recurring high margin revenue. Okay. Uh, we assign a wide moat rating to Amazon. Good. Uh, what else? Amazon burgeoning advertising business. Amazon's moat is the whole company. Okay. 
uh, a bit okay. Um, Sorry because... to interrupt you. Uh, um, <laughs> Hero, what time? I just say that. Sorry to interrupt you. Okay. Are there something that you really think will impact? Well, uh, we need to know about this company, how they perform, yeah. any bad yeah. news, good news? Yeah. Okay, the, the no, well, bad news, no. The good news is that, you know, Amazon is building out uh, the AWS. It's made up a deal with, um, uh, what's the name of the company? And, and T, and T Con or whatever, her, I have it written down somewhere, uh, which is a company that specializes in um, AI. And um, what Amazon tends to do now that's building out AWS, uh, there's a section there where I explained it all that they're they're going to try to make the user or the buyer experience at Amazon very much nicer. And what they I think they intend to do is to uh, create avatars and personal uh, assistants so that you can go there on Amazon and these uh, avatars or personal assistants will cater to you specifically and that they will uh, make it really tough for you to resist buying because they're going to make it really attractive. And I think I explained that on, let me see here. Um, so they, we are losing money on this company. What's the main cause of losing money? Which, which one? Where? Who? Amazon? Yes. No, they're, they're making money. This quarter, they made a heck of a lot of money. No, no, no. This quarter, that's great. But in our portfolio, we lost the money. Well, this quarter, quarter is great. So we, your recommendation is continue well, to hold? hold. Well, hold, okay. because we, we bought it at $161, right? We bought it at too high. The, the, the idea, because, you know, you, you were thinking that it's going to go higher. Well, maybe. But with Amazon, it's, it's volatile. Price is always going up and down. So what they were saying, uh, like I said here at the bottom, I, I kind of quoted them here. It says trimming when the prices are high and adding when they are low. This is uh, Davis New York Venture Fund. Okay, did great. Uh, and then, then from value line, the stock is more volatile than its uh, large cap peers. Price goes up and down. So buy it when it's uh, uh, low and sell it when it's high. Okay, so this, uh, ah, for God's sakes. Okay. So, okay. Uh, Amazon is, is good. So, basically, bottom line is that we bought, we bought too soon. Yeah. I don't remember when we bought it. I'm not sure what happened. We bought too, we bought too, uh, at the high price. Yeah. Yeah, it was too high. So, so should we be buying more uh, at this point? Because it's. Well, well, right now, this is my study, right? So what I said here when on the valuations, it says um, it says buy zone would be ninety dollars to one hundred and forty seven dollars. Well, it's trading at one hundred and forty five now, right? Another two dollars, that's it. It's hold. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, just to start to show you my study here. What What is our percentage for Amazon? What is it? Do you remember? Uh, the percentage is about five percent okay. of our holdings, right? Which is, you know, out of 11 stocks, well, out of 11 stocks, right, we should be holding about eight percent, nine percent of our portfolio in that particular stock. Amazon occupies five percent. I mean, it's less than what we should be holding, right? Okay, but okay. anyway. So, um, you, you are, are you, what's your recommendation? You want to buy more? No. Or? No, no, no. Hold. Let okay. the let the stock. If the price is going to go up, it'll go up over 160, right? And then we sell, we trim, and then it'll pro something or other will happen. Uh, other or will happen, and it'll go back down. And we buy it when it's around 100 bucks. So this is the way you're. You know, you should be doing it. Right. Okay. Anyway, the sales I said it was going to be about nine percent, right? And they they said it was the sales were going to be about eleven percent, twelve percent. But I said a little bit more conservative. Then the twenty uh, the earnings per share is going to go to about twenty four point six. And the reason behind that is because Amazon um, Morningstar here it assumes 
that the 2023 is that they're going to make about $2.82, right? And then they say over here, the earnings per share long-term growth estimate is going to be 16%. Well, 282 add 16% for every year, five years, and you come up with about $5.90. I said, I want them to earn $5.80. How much uh, projecting from this uh, quarter here, where we um, uh, just coming out of this recession, how much will I have to make this $1.93 grow to get it up to $5.80 at the end? And that was 24.6% growth. Which is, you know, kind of unfortunate that, but we, this is, these are the tools that we have. Uh, we, you know, it seems huge, but ignore that. Uh, we're just getting it to the uh, level of uh, earnings that my, uh, Morningstar is projecting. Okay, then all the other pre-tax profit. Well, you know, they're all red because at the last quarter everything just went down. So of course it's all negative. That's all red. Okay, so valuation. Uh, valuation, I said the uh, five-year average of 71, but I took off, you know, 101 PE, high PE, that's ridiculous. Uh, 88 high PE, ridiculous. And then um, the low PE, 63, that's a high number, so I took that out. But I kept one high number in, and I kept one high, ridiculously high number PE for the high. So anyway, 71.6. 47.1, um, and I, I assume PE is about 55, right? And when I saw a value line thinks it's going to go down to like, was it 35.9 PE? So uh, 55 is probably a good estimate. Uh, 580, that's what I wanted to go, whereas um, Morningstar assumes 590. I said 580, to be more conservative. So 318, okay. Uh, 47, a dollar 93 because that was the um, last trailing 12 months earnings per share. Uh, so a dollar 93, and it turns out to be about 90 dollars 70 cents. Break the buy hold sell zone. It's a uh, buy up until about 147 dollars, then goes into hold. Anything above 200 dollars sell. Uh, upside downside ratio is about 3.3 to 1, which is actually pretty good. Uh, no distortions there. Um, high PE return is 17.3. Low PE return is 15.5. That's that's good. Uh, here it's a buy, but barely, right? 147. It's at uh, right at the time of this thing is 143. That's three four dollars. Uh, but we shouldn't buy. We've already spent, uh, we overpaid for it already, 161. Um, and quarterly data, yeah, that's okay. Ratios, ratios are interesting. Okay. Uh, okay. Sorry, well, I'm sorry, oh, yeah, Pierre, not, not to cut you off, but just from the, for the sake of um, time and if we wanted to look at any other companies yeah. as well. Um, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, now, do you think, I guess you think overall the rating is a hold, but if the price were to drop, you know, you said the buy range was, um, you know, between that like 90 to, to 145, where yeah. would you, what would be the number where you would, you know, change your recommendation to a buy? I know the range is, you know, sure. Yeah. If we say, let's say it was 130, would that be something that would, uh, you think it's a strong purchase? And no. we're just at the limit of the buy, or do you think we need to really fall lower in that range? No, fall lower. I'd say about a hundred dollars. Okay. Yeah. If it gets anywhere near a hundred dollars, buy. If it gets over about hundred, well, we, we now we have to sell it at 100, over one hundred and sixty because that's what we bought it at. We sell it before that, we will have uh, you know bought high, sold low. So we have to wait until it goes over one hundred and sixty, and then sell. Okay. Well, I, I found that was really helpful. I mean, unless anybody has. Any specific questions for um, uh, for Pierre at this point? Then I think we can. Um, you know, I think it's a great picture for Amazon, and it gives us an idea of you know uh, or a true picture on a, on, a, on a trimming option there. Um, the other company that um, we had identified Jay as a kind of a, a, an underperformer, and we maybe we can see if we can 
uh, comment on it, and it's up this month, is IIPR uh, ready? You also have IIPR as a hold. Would you be uh, able to give us maybe five minutes as to the state of IIPR and, and um, give the group a little bit of uh, substance on uh, for potential motions? Sure. Thank you. So I've just sent you the screen. So feel free whenever you're ready to take over the screen and uh, let us know your thoughts. Yeah. Um, for, I cannot elaborate because of the interest of time. Uh, five minutes I will be going through mainly SSG quarterly report. And, yeah. Uh, and that's and, ready. I appreciate and, that. Not, not to cut you off. Thank you. And I appreciate that. You know, five minutes is not a very long time to go through a company, yeah. and let's we'll stay yeah. roughly for five minutes. But again, just a quarterly okay. report. So maybe any okay. major updates for the quarter, any major changes you've seen would be uh, if you could highlight those, that'd be really helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, we don't need to go through the SSG if there's no changes. Okay. Do, no do you have to the SSG? You can see my screen now. Yes, we can. We see. I see your analyst research page. Yes. Yeah. Generally, what I do is uh, go through all the analyst reports and company report and summarize in, in my form. Then I use this to fill up the quarterly report. Uh, the com This uh, uh, quarterly report to company uh, highlights are the, the re revenue increased uh, almost 10 percent. And uh, income EPS, the way we count is AFFO increased uh, seven and a half percent and the dividend is uh, kept the same dollar uh, 80 per this quarter and the debt total debt is uh, 12 percent of the to uh, total assets and they have total of 108 properties out of which 103 are uh, fully leased and five are being uh, developed and the triple net lease triple net lease means these guys can just rent the property and sit down and uh, the uh, tenant pays taxes, maintenance, repairs, everything else is pay, paid and uh, IAPR does not pay anything. They just rent and that's called a triple net lease. Uh, no lease expires before 2029, mostly long-term leases, uh, 16 years uh, plus average uh, length of lease. Uh, there is one property new lease. The remember, if you, last year one tenant uh, was not paying, and uh, finally the most of it they paid because of the, the lawsuits. Uh, that you know, pro the property taken from King's Garden is released to somebody else. Uh, I noticed uh, in the company report there are several litigations. Uh, it's a little hard to go through, but. Some of the people, because stock price went down, they are suing the company, and the company is suing this King's Garden, which gave them hard time last year. And still, the 97% of the um, properties are leased. And uh, CIFRA uh, analysis is recommendation is strong buy, and risk evaluation is moderate. And valuation, everybody, almost uh, the, all the analysts are quoting that current price is very attractive and positive uh, valuation. And uh, PE ratio is one of the lowest, uh, uh, close to 15%. Uh, this is, uh, I'm always curious when I see a company, uh, some two, three billion dollar company, and they are, I don't know how they operate, but only 19 employees total. Um, the closest companies that uh, competition is uh, first industrial rea reality and uh, mid America four stars. But uh, the this is strong buy according to Cifra, uh, according to Schwab uh, market perform. Uh, the equity rating thing is market perform and. Uh, P sales growth. Uh, uh, the, the second opinion, I, I don't know the market edge is uh, considered a major, but they are always giving a wide. And the Yahoo Finance has several positive uh, comments. The 
it is stock is undervalued performance outlook short term uh, is up mid term is up recommendation trend is uh, hold price target is anywhere between 80 and 179 um, the investor place uh, news uh, i don't know who writes those but uh, i could not trace the author the well prepared negative to negative challenges deliver impressive uh, dividends and uh, tenants are stable uh, it's, uh, what are the other financial uh, financial very good financial prudence and uh, very, very well diversified another investor article says next unstoppable russell 2000 stock to consider <laughs> and as strong foundations and not rattled by short-term trends and uh, another author uh, says this is the only cannabis focused real estate investment trust no other cannabis company is in the form of right reit uh, reits are supposed to distribute uh, almost all their earnings to stockholders uh, Analysts remain optimistic. 12-month price target is uh, potentially 45% up. Uh, Jax is rank. Uh, Jax rank is uh, number two. Means uh, buy, not strong buy, but buy. Uh, what else? Uh, shares lost 31.6%. All because last year one tenant gave hard time, not, not paying the uh, uh, lease. Uh, and uh, the some some people are writing negative news on IP IPR to bring the down bring down the price because they <laughs> they want to grab the shares and uh, what else uh, the uh, SEC report uh, rent rent collection is 97 percent. And they, they, they disposed one property out of uh, those which they got back from uh, King's Garden. And uh, new acquisitions and additional investments, uh, about three, uh, 12, 12%, this is where that caused the loan. Okay, and that, that's the analyst uh, summary of the opinion. I'll go through the um, quarterly report. Quarterly report is I kept the uh, same as last month. Uh, pro my my pro projections are very conservative, considering the some negative news uh, last year. Uh, most recent quarters about 10% sales growth. I think we I mentioned this, and 7.5% um, EPS growth. Uh, what else? Okay, these are the key points i added here it's under stock is considered now by many people undervalued uh, what else uh, the market perform uh, i mentioned this shop and the recommendation is hold then going to ssg i'll quickly go through uh, probably i'm reaching my time limit um, this is how the looks uh, the one thing i did not mention so far is the company is kind of a matured stage where everything is steady and that's the reason um, they are not acquiring a lot of properties like they used to um, so the company is becoming uh, well established and uh, up, up, uh, the okay uh, this is this is my uh, my uh, Come on. Okay. You can see that high PE uh, all these years, it's stabilizing to average PE. So I assumed average as uh, about 14, 15%. Uh, and that's still very conservative. Uh, I see uh, uh, 4.9 to 1 ratio, buy ratio. Current price is 78, 71 and it's comfortably in the buy zone and uh, what else uh, 
Yeah. Uh, the other extra I guess, points. I guess um, the question becomes why ultimately, you know, you have the SSGs by, if you could summarize, you know, one major point, despite the SSG being a buy, why are you recommending a hold? One, like if you had to say the overall summary point on that, what would you think it would be ready? Uh, because of this uh, um, nervousness in the market, uh, the people are knocking down the price because of the the tenants problems with uh, uh, not able to pay the rent. Um, I, I would buy, I'm, I'm thinking personal uh, portfolio, I'm thinking of buying a few shares because the, the price is really good. Price so is I, really good and, and a dividend is one of the best <laughs> dividend company. Oh, right. Dividend because, it's, uh, dividend because it's uh, uh, REITs, that's why dividend. Yes, yes. They pay dividend, REITs. But my question is, we made so much money on this company and now we lost. What will happen? I feel like it does relate to what <laughs> The one uh, Pierre was saying, no, you never know what's going to happen. You know, oh, you take a very, 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 very simple. I mentioned uh, um, before the one tenant not paying the rent last year, market got nervous about the whole thing. And people were, some analysts were writing negative article, negative, intentionally negative because they want to bring the, down the price. Uh, but so come we, uh, yeah, that that comment that I relate to, we don't listen to any analyst. We ourselves trade as analyst. We believe our research. So, yeah, don't believe yeah. like you just said. All analysts have an intention, right? So we are trained to be our own analyst to analyze the stock. Yeah. Uh, where is my screen? So many screens here. I'm trying to look at the our uh, treasurer report. Where is the treasurer report? I don't know where it is. Yeah, you, you ask a question on the. Uh, where is the treasurer report? Oh. So it is a REITs company, but you pay depends on where this company, if it's in your whole portfolio, you will pay taxes on the, on the, uh, on the REITs. Yeah, okay. I'm looking at the treasury report. Okay, uh, I'm bringing the screen back to our uh, pie chart. Uh, yeah, this this is the uh, no, this is not IAPR, is it? Where is IAPR here? Okay, IAPR okay. is here. Yeah, we can actually mm -hmm. our our share is very small. We can buy few shares. What's the uh, buy range? Hold, hold, holding, we are holding 4.7 percent. I know. What's the buy? What's the price? What's the buy price range? Oh, buy, buy price range is. Uh, uh, but your SSG buy, right buy, now. Yeah, 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 buy, buy is, uh, you're able to see, see my screen, right? Buy is uh, yeah. 62, 62 to 86 buy range. What's the current price? 78. So, but then also, because we did not look at your SSG and um, your ratio is a five to one, I would, I would revisit to get close to three to one. No, but but these are very conservative estimates. I already uh, did a very conservative estimate. So, so then, so then, why is the recommendation about? But my recommendation is because we have only four point seven, we can uh, buy a few more few more shares. 
Okay, so I, okay. Guess, I guess you're changing the recommendation from hold to buy now that we've talked it out. You you would you would recommend buy rather than hold? Yes. Okay. Uh, how many shares we have? Let's see. You can just go to iCloud. Oh, I see. Is this a live? Okay. Uh, uh, innovative industrial properties. 40 we have shares. About 40. Yeah, 40, 40, 40 shares. We have 40 shares. So we can, buy, we can buy 10 shares. Okay, well, I guess we can table that for a motion potentially, but so thank you, Randy. I uh, appreciate it. I just realized now we're we're at time for the quarterly reports. Um, we have the other reports that are available. I know some of them, um, for example, Vertex, uh, we'll discuss next week. There are also holds. If anybody has any more questions about the holds, uh, please, let's do that offline. So any emails uh, on the subjects and then the stock watcher can can answer some questions more directly there. Um, at this point, I do realize we do have guests and attendees that are on hold. Uh, at this point, I'd like to invite them to join us um, for any comments, questions, uh, any feedback that they might have. I noticed that there are no questions posted during the, 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 the presentation, so hopefully there were no missed questions, but let's move first to uh, Arlene. Hi, Arlene. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, I believe you're self-muted. If you do, if you wish to let us know your thoughts, what you thought about the meeting, uh, about the group, any of the companies discussed, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, okay, well, Arlene, welcome, and if, please feel free to unmute yourself at any time. Uh, we'll move on now to Felisa. Oh, I think Felisa just dropped off. Never mind. Um, Jane uh, Chatterjee, is that am I pronouncing your name correctly? Um, yes, Jane Chatterjee is our regional manager for our chapter. Jane is a distinguished guest. I guess tonight she's visiting us. Wow, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Jane, for visiting us. Um, I believe you're self muted. If you had any any comments, any feedback, we we would love to hear. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, okay, and then, uh, well, again, thank you for joining us. Uh, welcome, and, and if you do have any any comments, any feedback, we, we would love to hear from you. Uh, welcome again. Uh, we'll move on now to, we have uh, another Jane, Jane Ohenhen, I believe, I'm, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you have any comments, thoughts, questions, concerns, we'd love to hear from them from you. Uh, oh, I see you have unmuted. Welcome. <coughs> Hi, good evening. I actually appreciated the presenters. Uh, I enjoyed listening in. I'm not experienced in this stuff at all. I'm one of the two people that love this presentation. It was smooth. Although I'm new to it, I really do not have the depth of understanding. So I just want to thank you for your time. Sure, well, I'm oh, sorry, I think I'm going to have some microphone issues, but thank you. This group is open for everyone. So we have several individuals who are first time investors, uh, people who this is really an opportunity to learn. Uh, with this club, we all we're all learning every day. So um, please don't feel uh, that being an experience should be an obstacle. Attending more meeting, to joining or to asking questions. So um, we're very glad that you joined us today. Thank you. Um, hi, this is Jane. Um, I just got myself unmuted. I thought you guys had got me mute, muted. But I I managed to unmute myself. Um, so thanks very much for. Um, uh, you know, for inviting me to the the meeting, or I guess I just signed up as as a um, uh, guest. It seems as though you covered a tremendous lot, and um, uh, I know this is a this is a great model club from the past, but I haven't been able to tune in um, uh, for for a while. So uh, thanks very much. It's very uh, enlightening. 
Perfect. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Um, we appreciate having you online. And, um, any any feedback that you have about our meeting and the, the organization or the content would always be appreciated. So if uh, in the next couple of days as well, you have any other thoughts, we, we would love to receive them. Um, I think I see did Arlene post a question in the chapter. Uh, just a, well, I appreciated the financial analysis of Amazon. Thank you, Arlene. Um, again, this the meeting will be posted on YouTube in the coming days. So if you did want to go revisit the the conversation about Amazon or any of the financials that were discussed, you'll be able to find uh, a recording of today's meeting on our on our YouTube page. Um, so please feel free to use that as a reference. Uh, now I believe. Uh, Christy is also joined us, Christy Stewart. You're self-muted, but welcome. Um, thank you for joining us. And if, if you also have any comments, questions, feedback, we would, uh, we would love to hear from you. And uh, thank you again for joining us. And last but not least, uh, we have Raj on the line as well. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Raj. Uh, I believe you're, I may have, I have unmuted you now, but I think you're still self-muted. Um, thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, concerns, we would we would greatly appreciate that as well. Um, and if not, thank you for joining us. So uh, thank you to all our guests. Um, at this point, um, you know, pending any questions, concerns from any of our guests or our members, uh, we're gonna move on to club business. Um, at this point, the first topic of business that we would need to address are are there any motions from tonight's presentation? We discussed a few companies. Um, there was a recommendation for a buy of from Amazon from Ready. Um, do we have any motions based on on any of the discussion tonight? For example, Ready. Not to put you out. Are you interested in making a motion to purchase? Uh, I believe you said 10 shares of Amazon. Is that something that you'd be interested uh, in? I know it was IIRP, right? IIRPR. Yes, I would. Yes, I'd like to propose buy 10 shares of uh, IIPR at, uh, at tomorrow's price. Do we have a second? Okay, this is Joanne. I, I actually have a question before we um, proceed. What are the effects? I just saw that more states are legalizing marijuana. And so eventually, I think the reason why um, I, IPR is doing well is because they can't use banking. Is that correct, Ready? They have to, you know. Banking regulations are still developing. It, it will take a while, but uh, currently banks cannot loan to these properties. So, and, yeah, mostly it, it has to be cash offer. So, IIPR is actually finance. So, they buy the property and then they lease it out to the, uh, their the yeah. client? Yeah, they lease uh, to the client. And a client pays property tax, maintenance, repairs. Um, that, that's what it is called a triple net lease. Okay, so my other question is, why did it, um, why did IIPR really decrease so much? And why do you expect it to rebound? Yeah, we went through this last uh, two, three reports. Uh, the one tenant out of 130, Three uh, hundred and eight properties. Uh, one tenant leased four properties, and they defaulted uh, rent last year. The company sued them. They got most of it back, paid. Uh, but because of that one, there were negative news reports, and uh, price dropped. But still, ninety-seven percent of the properties are leased and they are uh, paying rent no problem. Okay, all right, thank you, Ready. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, I will second the motion. Oh, well, thank you. I thought the motion is going to die, Joanne, if you're not Joanne. 
<laughs> what did you say? I thought the motion is going to die because nobody said anything until you. Well, I wanted to. I wanted to know, yeah. you know, the status of yeah. the company. And, no, you're uh, right. No, yeah. What, there was a moment of silence. I thought the motion is going to die. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the price is uh, current price is really good. PE is really low, lowest, and good. And the company is very stable. Dividend is excellent. Uh, okay, so who's going to do the motion? I'm, I'm preparing the motion now. Thank you, Mina. Of course. Would you wait on the second? And then I think we were leaving it, it the voting open for like a week. Is that true? And it's um we yeah, don't have I'll leave it open week. until next Monday. So we have six days. That okay. works for me. Uh and then I'm gonna make it closing sooner if a majority is reached. So if we as soon as we have a majority, the the, the motion will pass. Okay. Uh, Mina, why do we need to uh, why do we need to close when the enough votes are reached? Um, because I mean, it's there's it's a moot vote at that point, right? If we have a majority already reached, everybody else can vote no, but the motion already have passed. So um, yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah. mute, but uh, it's good good to see how many people uh, voted above the majority level yeah for sure but i guess um um just don't want to leave too many votes open either so if we have if the votes already done tomorrow there's then it's going to affect the purchase price because then the vote won't be purchased and the vote won't be closed until a week later but if tonight we have enough votes and there's a yes then tomorrow you'll be empowered as treasurer to go make the purchase at the market rate so you know okay. This way, I think it prevents a little bit of uncertainty because of the price. I was, yeah, I was just curious. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's generally the 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 approach I'll try and take with them. But um, if you know what, if next motion or next vote, we definitely open to kind of specifics. If if you wanted to make something uh, more specific, we can include it in the motion as well. But um, okay, so that's that that motion has now been sent out. You should receive an uh, an email from my iClub. So please feel. Uh, vote when you have the opportunity that uh, closes next week or as soon as the majority is reached. So uh, please just review uh, Reddy's conversation, his report, and, uh, and vote accordingly. Um, back to club business. Are there any other motions um, for buy purchases or sales this evening? Any motions related to Amazon? Okay, well, uh, seeing if there are, you know, uh, assuming there are no other votes, um, we can move on to the remaining uh, club business. We have just some administrative topics. Next month, I'll be presenting a uh, education topic, the topic to be determined uh, or to be announced. Let's make it a little bit more official that way. Um, but please feel free in 2023, uh, 2024, pardon me, uh, we have several months that are, um, that are in need of an education topic. Um, and I don't believe we have, um, so anybody who's willing to volunteer uh, for an education topic, that'd be greatly appreciated. Um, I believe we would also take volunteers for uh, stock studies in 2024 as well. Um, and then the executive team will, will prepare a, um, kind of an updated calendar for next year. But uh, in the meantime, please uh, feel free to send any volunteers you have, if there's a specific month that, that that's most convenient for you, um, for either a stock study or an education topic, please include that in the email and we'll do our best to accommodate it. Um, other than that, I believe that is the totality of my club business. Joanne, John, uh, Jay, Redu, are there any other topics that we need to raise with the larger group? Uh, do we have any reports due next? month that we can remind people I uh, oh, I think we'll, we'll, we'll definitely put thank you for saying that actually Jane had uh, volunteered to present vertex in more detail I, I know it's 
it's technically up this month, but uh, it's on the agenda for this month, pardon me, but uh, I think Jay, uh, Joe, um, Jane has agreed to do a little bit more of a focused presentation given uh, Huel's topic on selling or trimming and Vertex is uh, a prime candidate for a trim based on its uh, percentage of our portfolio. So uh, I think next month we'll have an education topic that Jane will grace us with her, her thoughts on Vertex. Um, other and than also, that, um, RMD, I think um, I didn't make in my agenda that Isla was doing RMD, but uh, I didn't realize that. So uh, if, um, maybe we could have an RMD report next month. That'd be great. And then we can decide whether we want to buy the other half of, of RMD. <clears throat> we only purchased, <clears throat> excuse me, we only purchased $1,500 worth, which is less than our usual amount at this point in, in, the, club's, in the club's life. So. Maybe we want to purchase more if it's if it was if the quarterly report turned out to be okay, or maybe we want to sell if the quarterly report turned out to be not okay. So yeah, that sounds good. That. Yeah, let's let's definitely add that to next month's agenda, please. Uh, that's 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 a great idea. And, and then who else? It looks like who else has Disney. Yes. Okay. All right. And and again, who else? If um if you no rest for the wicked. Old, then uh, let me let us know so that we can we can organize the meeting ahead of time. A December meeting is always going to be a little bit lighter than um, is typically lighter than our other months meeting. But um, at this point, it sounds like we'll have a pretty a full meeting. We'll think of ninety minutes in December. What mostly. was what was the question that you you wanted oh, to answer? You, yeah, if you uh, once you once you get into the weeds of looking at Disney, if it's a hold, um, appreciate just letting me know so that we can we can set up the the meeting for December, it's a week earlier than it usually is, and we usually keep it a little oh. bit later. So. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so just, okay. yeah, just, if it's a hold, no need to get into the weeds of it, we will, uh, we can cover them more in detail in January if, if there's no action to be taken. But if, if you see something that needs to be brought up, most definitely it's scheduled for next month, so we will have the time to, to discuss it if necessary. Okay. And then did Anit, was Anitra able to attend? I'm sorry, I was late. I don't believe I saw her online this evening. Um, so no, I don't, I don't think so. She's got Meta. And then Jay, were you able to do the paychecks? No, I, I, so no, maybe the, I did not. Those two are so next, month. next month. Right, next month of the catch up. Also, I'm working on the, 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 to the job. I'm redesigning the the quarterly report, I want everybody address the same thing. And I felt like we are on our own some of so the so long, some, you know, uh, I want to be ours, all have a same agenda, like for quarterly reports, what is the stuff we want to cover? Uh, I am retuned, refine to the, the quarterly reports, maybe I can put that on next year. Oh, sorry, next year, next month. Yeah, and uh, Jay, I mean, we can take that off. I'm happy to help with you on that. Uh, to help yeah. you with that. We can, yeah. we can, or as an executive, we can do that as well. So we can, uh, we can put some time on the calendar so we don't. Uh, yeah, that'll be great. Okay. And then, um, Nina, was Hanny able to do Freeport McMorrin? Uh, Hanny was. He, I believe he sent a report in and he, uh, his recommendation was a hold, I believe. All right. I think so. Sounds good. Yeah, so we'll, um, John, I, are you updating the, um, the schedule right now? Because I think you'll want to put J under there as well. For okay, the all right. For December. People that did not present tonight, it will be presented next week, next month. December yeah. is a catch up. Okay. December will be a catch up, and um, yeah, we have light. I mean, the education topic will be light. Um, and then if we present, depending on, uh, on the other reports, we can. Yeah. You know, I'm wondering if I just yep. have a thought. Maybe the education topic just yeah, we are able to meet to get the quarterly yep. report agenda figured out. Maybe we'll just present sure. next month. That sounds good to me. So we can implement it in the new year. Yeah. What do you think? Sounds good. Okay, so, Jay, let me see, uh, you and I, um, maybe I'll send you an invite in the next couple of days, you and I, okay. we can, and I can, uh, yeah. we can put that together. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. I can invite Baku. If he's available. I'll, wait, I'll obviously wait until you're feeling a little bit better. So we'll, uh, yeah. that'll be next week. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. 
Well, um, unless there's any other club business that we need to address today, I see there's some chats. Um, Isla, uh, I do not have AMIC, but I will present RMD next month. Perfect. Thank you, Isla. So we'll add Isla to the agenda for, for next month as well. Um, this would, we'll, we'll play a little bit of catch up. Um, all right. So unless there's any other club business, I think we may have, um, you know, knock on wood, we may be able to finish on time and potentially finish a few minutes early. So um, pending your thoughts, I will dismiss our guests and stop the recording. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I appreciate the meeting and your time and uh, have a great evening. Okay. Thanks, Mina. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.